the French and Allied forces make contact. The most decisive the, battle of the Italian campaign of the Napoleonic Wars is about to begin. History here, and today we're going to focus on the Battle of Cassano d'Adda, which took place at the Battle of the Adda uh, at the Battle of the Adda River, and so it was near the city of Cassano d'Adda. Therefore, it is called the Battle of Cassano d'Adda. Now, this battle is part of, I mean, the Napoleonic Wars. This is part on my new series of Forgotten Wars. And this, <clears throat> excuse me, is the first one. Um, so, this war is usually talked about, like, if you look on professional history channels, in five seconds and then they end it. Why? I don't know. There were several battles that occurred. They don't want to talk about it. There's not much, not enough information. I mean, that's true. There isn't that much, as much information, but it's still information. And so, I have to cover it. And the first one will be the Italian ca campaign, in which Alexander Suvorov, it's not Suvorov, Suvorov, and yes, he was still alive. Um, Suvorov, he fought in Italy and then he fought in Switzerland the first is focused on Italy and the several battles that went with it mainly the decisive battle of Cassano d'Adda the war of the second coalition had begun after the war of the first coalition had kind of failed because France took several important territories including Switzerland and the Netherlands Suvorov came all the way from Russia to confront Moro. He had to get to Italy. When Napoleon was in Egypt, the French realized how outnumbered they would be. In the end, the two men decided to fight, finally meeting at Cassano d'Adda on April 27th, 1799. Both sides prepared for battle and met at the Adda River. Both sides make contact, and Suvorov, Suvorov, not Suvorov, Suvorov, commands a charge, and effectively the Austrian-Russian army charges the French, and the French eventually become pushed back and are in disarray, and effectively they surrender. This battle was a Napoleonic loss. Something very common in the Italian campaign. Now, this is not the first battle in the Italian campaign. In fact, this is in the middle, at least. All the rest of the battles of the Italian campaign, I will cover. Well, some of them I will cover in this video. Others I'll cover in other videos. But the Italian campaign was very effective and a French victory was very very rare because they lost why because they did well so um, the force the, the number of forces and number of casualties both sides suffered are in the text boxes right here on the screen and you may look at them and you may make your own inferences from them however we're gonna move to the next battle which is basically the first battle, the Battle of Verona, on March 26th, 1799. However, I will give you some time to read that humongous blurb of text. You may either pause the video, or wait, I can't think of a different solution. Well, 
I will, um, I will in this video try to make a continuation to the Battle of Quesano Diada, in which we focus on Piotr Bagration and um, several, like, there were several other skirmishes that occurred at the Battle of Quesano Diada, because there is several other, like, points during the battle, and that was not the full battle, but essentially it was uh, an allied victory. And, well, not for Napoleon, well, I mean, without Alexander Svorov, I mean, with Alexander Svorov, Napoleon probably would have been defeated, but, I mean, honestly, if not for Napoleon, Napoleon would have lost Italy pretty quickly. And he basically did during this campaign because he was in Egypt. And yes, I will cover those battles, but this is the Forgotten War in which there are several battles and it's a nice lot of information. I'm getting it from a free site and no, it's not Wikipedia. That would be terrible. Instead, I'm getting it from historyofwar.org. We'll leave the link in the description and I'll use it as a source because it certainly is a source. But let's get to it. Somewhere around the end of March, General Paul Gray, an Austrian general, was heading towards Verona, where it is very obvious that there was another general and another army, and this army was commanded by Chevet, or Chevet, whichever one you think is better. However, I think it's Javier, but that could be my own taste. Now, the Austrian army had 59,000 against 58,000. Javier commanded the left with at least 23,000 men. Well, Monterrey commanded the right with at least, well, less than 20,000 men. Well, um, Moro commanded the center with not as much men, but it was still a good amount. And on the Austrian side, the left had at least 20,000 men. The right had, well, at least 20,000 plus men, and the center had all the rest. Schecher commanded the left and center. Well, the right was commanded by von Krajem. Both sides had one similarity. The left was strong, while the right was very weak. The battle finally began, with the French instantly gaining advantage on the right, while on the left, the Austrians quickly got the upper hand and pushed back the French. While well, the French captured one pontoon bridge, two pontoon bridges, but both were destroyed, and eventually the French managed to push back. However, in the center, they finally got to fight in the late evening, and finally the French retreated and fought all the way back to the present day Vatican City. The French, at the end, broke and fled. However, Cray also retreated. However, in my opinion, objectively, the battle is technically indecisive because both sides made an advance on both wings. So, I'd say the battle was inconclusive and this, the first battle of the Italian campaign, didn't really prove any stunning results. You can say, oh, the French won because they had less cautious. However, that's not really a good reason, because casualties are usually, might be the decisive fa deciding factor in the war, but in an Italian campaign, not really. The first battle occurred on March 26, 1799, and the next battle we'll look at occurred on April 5, 1799, and was called the Battle of Maganano, which is before the Battle of Casano Diada, which we will expand Just on. Just like before, Von Kayim and Cray commanded the Austrians, 
Well, just like before, Javert and Moreau also commanded the French. Now, the French had around anywhere from 46,000 to 50,000, with the Austrians had anywhere from 20,000 to 45,000 men. And on April 5th, 1799, the Battle of Maginano began. Sorry, it was actually called Battle of Magnano. And so the generals for the Austrians also included General Holzern, a general more candid. And on the French side, there was Syria, Victor, and and Delmas. Also, don't forget, Grenier. the battle was not really that evenly matched. However, finally, the battle began near Magana, Magnano. The French initially had very had a very successful time. However, they were driven back by the impending Austrians, and eventually they retreated. Soon, Scherer resigned, and Moro was placed in command, and this this defeat just helped the Russians come into Italy. It was an astounding victory. Chevet resigned from his post as commander because of the huge loss. Italia was free. Most or all of Europe was surprised at this victory over the great French Empire, which in reality was the French Republic, but everyone knew it was an empire, even though there was no emperor, but they knew that the directory was really bad. Now, the initial conflict had a very lasting impression on the European nations, specifically that of Italy. Because they kind of wanted to be liberated from the French grasp. Now, as usual, you may read the text boxes on the number of casualties and forces both sides had. And again, you may deduce for yourself the interpretation of the battle. The next initial conflict is the continuation of the Battle of Kisano Diada, or also known as the Battle of Lecco. On the fateful day... Before the Battle of Casano di Ada, there was already fighting at Casano di Ada, which doesn't make sense, but I'll explain it to you. The French had anywhere from 10,000 to 30,000, while the Austro-Russian force had maybe at least 30,000. And Piotr Bagration, basically Peter Bagration, was fighting against Syria and sorry not Syria, Soyes. Syria was fighting against Vukasovic, which believe it or not was not a Russian, he was an Austrian. Also sorry, it's actually Paderno, not Paduro. I think I said Paduro. I did. I'm very sorry. But Paderno was between Brivio and Trezzo. The front stretched from Pizigan Neton and all the way to Lecco. Lecco is between Lake Como and Lake Garlette. Before the battle, the Allies wished to capture Milan and Hada, and so they advanced towards the two important strategic cities. Later, the front stretched from Brivio to Cassano Diada. This is the part I have not shown you, and I hope you will enjoy it as much as I did, even though I made it. But, let's get to it. This is Milan, Paderno, Diada River. The battle finally begins, and both sides clash in an epic battle in which the French at me at Milan are soon crushed 
and are forced to give up the city. Therefore, giving up their advantage. And finally, Syria is soon forced to surrender with the arrival of reinforcements. The French are now weak and retreat. And most of the army is either crushed or captured. And initially, the battle is over. The Russo-Austrian force celebrate a great victory over the French army. And the imprisoned soldiers are soon fully imprisoned. And Milan is kept. The other part of Cassano Diada was also a rousing success on the next day. And the two forces united, becoming even stronger and weakening the French greatly. It was a nice success. Zwarf supposedly stated, The other is a Rubicon, and we cross it over the bodies of our enemies. If you want to know what the Rubicon is, well, that is the river. Gaius Julius Caesar crossed to start the Civil War with Pompey starting a humongous Roman Civil War that will ultimately destroy the Republic and prop up the Empire. You may read the text on the screen. You may even pause your video because I know it's a lot. But we'll get to the next battle very shortly. The battle was devastating for Moreau. And he had to withdraw, while well, Savorov also withdraw to rest. The battle began as Sarevich, Konstantin, Pavlovich, and Rosenberg decided to fight Moreau. And they quickly pushed him back. At Basiganana, however, they lost many men and suffered many casualties till this quick battle very quickly ended in rapid succession. And it was very devastating. For the Russian army, and even though it was blamed on Andrei Rosenberg, we all know it was actually Konstantin Pavlovich. In reality, Konstantin, I mean, Konstantin was the son of Pavel Petrovich, and he only ruled for a few months, and then Tsar Alexander I came to the throne, and the messed up army protocol stopped. And then, well, the battle was very devastating for the Russian army. However, this battle was not that decisive. As not as much men were lost. The Battle of Casano Diada, for instance, was much more devastating to the French than this battle to the Russians. And this battle was relatively short and very mild. And, as said before, casualties were low for the French, and not that high for the Russians. And so, I can, I can conclude that it is not as big of a defeat as it might as well seem. And Basiganana did not really serve any purpose in the Italian campaign of the Napoleon Wars, of the Second Coalition, of the French Revolutionary Wars. Andre Rosenberg served in battles before, and will serve in battles after, and he wasn't really blamed for the disaster. However, Constantine kind of was, but he was the Tsar's son, so no true blame could ever be put upon him, which is kind of Silly, honestly. The first battle of Marengo, or San Giuliano, began on the 16th of May. And Alexander Suorf commanded his troops against Jean Victor Marie Moreau. And the two sides clashed, the, and the Russian Austrians got the better hand because they had more men and more reinforcements, and they quickly crushed any sort of resistance the French could have ever had as Jean-Victor Marie Moreau retreated 
post haste. The battle had ended disastrously for the French, and the French may have not lost as much men as the Russo Austrian army had, which is pretty significant, but they were outnumbered, and Jean Victor Marie Moreau decided to retreat in his entire army away to avoid entire destruction of his army, which I think was pretty smart because Napoleon was there, the Napoleon probably would have done something different, but that's subject to debate, and also that was a joke. I'm very sorry if you may feel like I'm rushing these battles and just speeding through them. I mean, I just want to get to the Battle of the Trebia because the Battle of the Trebia was really significant, but these battles are also important and also somewhat decisive for our purposes. Why? Because that's the way it is. And you don't need to question it. No I'm kidding. You can question a lot of things. But this video so far is pretty, pretty long. And I hope you enjoy it thus far. Now let's get to the Battle of Modena, which occurred sometime after this battle. However, before we continue, I want to get an important point. You may have noticed that the French have not really fought any decisive battles or inflicting any serious casualties to the Allied army. But the next battle might as very well surprise you. But please do not even think of being surprised. But you may read the text on the screen as usual. The Battle of Modena began. And Hohenzollern was commanding some units and stumbled upon some French units. And I don't know why, but he wanted to withdraw. And he, but he quickly realized that the French army outnumbered him seven to one. And the French quickly pummeled upon the Austrian army. They gained many, many losses. But the Allied army quickly decided to retreat. I don't know why McDonald didn't want to chase after them. But it's for obvious reasons because McDonald was wounded in action. The Battle of Modena, just like the previous battle of Bassiganana, or Bassiganana. Nana, Bazi, Ghana, whatever, was not decisive at all because it's pretty obvious on number 71. It doesn't really mean that much. And to be honest, Hohenzollern, surprised his own army, didn't become destroyed, but at least MacDonald was wounded in action. And this, this, was what made Battle of Modena not as decisive because the general was wounded in action and could not force his men to destroy and annihilate all and Zoran's army entirely. And the battle was just an encounter that didn't really mean that much and was a surprise to both sides. The next battle, the Battle of the Trebia, will be much more decisive, and honestly, it is much more famous of a battle than the Battle of Modena, and this just shows you how forgotten the Italian War truly is, because no other history channels actually make videos on these battles, Except for me, which is pretty surprising, honestly. Because no one actually covers his battles in depth, and I'm not really covering them that much in depth. But I'm trying my best, which truly matters. However, we shall take a little detour in this next segment. Now, before we go on to the next battle, I want to say this. Well, I'll answer this question. Excuse me. 
Where is Napoleon? Well, Napoleon is in the Ottoman Empire. Specifically, he is in Ottoman Egypt, fighting the Ottomans during the time of these battles. But to be honest, Alexander Sephora probably would have defeated him if Alexander Sephora was still alive when he came back, but he obviously wasn't. He was dead, so, well, yeah, it's, it's whatever. Um, okay, so, Napoleon was in Egypt for what reason? That doesn't make sense. It's far away from France. Well, because of the Directory. The Directory feared Napoleon's power. And so they were like, okay, bye-bye, Napoleon. We will send you away so you die, and you won't serve us anymore. And go, die. Because they wanted the Ottoman expedition to fail, and it basically did, but we'll get to that. In another video, in fact, I'll cover, like, all the coalition, and basically all the battles, but not for now, and not right now. So, what about the Directory, you may ask? Well, the Directory was five men elected, and these five men were very stinking corrupt. Now, why were they corrupt? Because they were. Who was the first, who was the first man? Paul Jean Nicolas. I think I missed, well, whatever. Jean Nicolas. Or, whatever, Jean. I'm calling Jean, yeah. And this man was actually terribly corrupt. In fact, all five of them were corrupt, evil, and without morals. But so was, well. I don't want to say Napoleon, but whatever. You get the point. These five men were evil. I don't want to talk about them because they're so bad. So, instead, we'll talk about those lines you see. Like, those lines, I mean, like, diagonals. So, France invaded the Switzerland and renamed it the Bat Bat V. No, not, not that. Renamed it the Helvetic. Republic, Helvetic, and they re they invaded the Netherlands and renamed it the Batavian Republic. Why? Because they did, and also it's pretty surprising that they did since they barely had a good army and well, it was a very professional army, and now the Netherlands is under French control and it's bad, really garbage, honestly, terrible, bad. Um, and that's not good, but... Uh, we will see the British also invade the Netherlands during this time, and we'll look at it because the British odd with the Russians, because they wanted to. But also, Tsar Paul had sent Alexander Suvorov to, to Italy, and then he goes to Switzerland. But we'll talk about that. Now, Tsar, it's a spoiler here, I know I'm going off track, but Tsar Pavel Petrovich, that was his name. That means Tsar Paul, son of Peter. And that son of Peter was actually Peter III. That's actually a terrible czar, honestly. Now, Tsar Paul was actually assassinated by the boyars because he just messed up the army and made them look like the Brit those British guards inside the Birmingham Palace, which is not good. And it is terrible, honestly. But now, we're going to move on to the next battle, which will be decisive. Now, this battle was called the Battle of the Trebia. 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 Whatever. Again, it's another, another river battle, and I mean, I don't know why, but it is. And the battle lasted 30 day, th three days, much like the Battle of Yarmouk and Al Kadesh. However, it's nothing like those battles. So, let us get to it. You know, the battle. General MacDonald went from the mighty city of Rome to Florence. And then he went all the way up the Po. Victor was sent from Genoa to the same location, the Trebia. When Savorov learned of this, he told Karl Ott to be posted on the Trebia River, and so he was sent to defend 
However, Savorov realized that this would not be enough and force marched his army towards the Trebia. In just 24 hours, his army covered 30 miles. The battle began before Savorov arrived and Karlot fought against the French who were led by McDonald and and General Victor. Moreau was to come later with reinforcements. The battle was deadly, but finally Alexander Savorov finally came to reinforce the Russian Austrians. And finally Moreau came as well, and the battle ground to a halt. On the second day, Savorov decided to take the initiative. That morning, MacDonald was rearranging his lines and therefore his men. Rosenberg, Bagration, and Skuwekasovsky's divisions was to cross the Trebia. The Russian advance guard pushed back the French, and Victor responded by pushing them back. And then Rosenberg pushed him back as well but the Allies didn't make any more progress. The fighting was very fierce. Finally, an impromptu battle broke out when a French unit accidentally decided to fight with a Russian unit and the two skirmished and the generals had to try to calm the men down and then the two sides withdrew. Nothing important had actually occurred. General Dombrovsky was commanded to attack the Allied right. And so the third day began with Alexander Suvorov commanding Pyotr Bagration to defend. And then the, the battle truly became the, the basic victory for the French as the French quickly outflanked the Russian Austrians. However, Pyotr Bagration quickly routed the French on the French left. And soon, Pyotr used those extra troops to quickly and very decisively outflank the French and therefore eliminating them as a threat. And soon, MacDonald decided to withdraw. Also, Moreau was not present, he was at Genoa, which is where the French retreated. However, technically, the battle was not over. The Russo Austrians uh, went and charged the French at Piacenza, which is technically during the battle. And then the Russians charged at the French, decimating most of their men and effectively captured a lot of their men prisoner and the French promptly retreated and MacDonald quickly retreated to Moreau in Genoa. The Allies were enthralled with this very, very decisive victory and so decided to keep campaigning in the Italy. The Battle of the Trebi River had been a victory for the Allied army. The Allies had crushed the French and Savorov, just like Hannibal, had defeated the enemy. The French basically claimed they were the Roman Empire and so Russia's Carthage and we can all get the it. Four days had been a brutal and bloody engagement. Both sides suffered Kajdis, but the French suffered much more since they lost half of their army and 7,000 were captured, the rest were destroyed. The battle was truly the most decisive victory in the Italian campaign. Now, let us go to the next battle in the Italian campaign. French army advanced through the Alps and 
This is before the Battle of the Trebia. And they quickly began continuing to advance. The front line would never see daylight again. As they would be killed at the Battle of the Trebia River. And the French quickly advanced through the Alps to meet the enemy. The, Fr the French fought Savor at the Battle of the Trebia and half of their army was completely annihilated and the remaining half had to forcefully withdraw. Then the MacDonald quickly retreated but he found that the other contingent had seek had seeked battle with the Allies. Well basically the Austrians, not the Russians. And they decided to fight. McDonald's contingent retreated away. Far from anywhere, all the way to Genoa. M Moreau decided to command the army and faced Vukasovic, who was an Austrian again, and the two sides quickly and decisively clashed. The center didn't really engage, but when the Austrian right collapsed, the battle was over and the Austrians withdrew. Their army was weak. The French regrouped and retreated under Moreau and the victory had been a very but not really decisive battle. Moreau withdrew, going back to MacDonald. Everybody rejoiced at the great victory. However, the victory was not as decisive as one might have thought because he didn't manage to crush the army like Savorov did at the Trebia to the French. And it did not prevent Savorov's victory, even though it was on the same day of the end of the battle, on June 20th. And MacDonald, however, managed to retreat in good order because of the victory of this battle. Also, I forgot to mention, this battle is called, I don't know how in the world I forgot this, Battle of Alessandria, or Cassino Groza, either or works, but that's the name of the battle. I'm sorry I didn't say in the beginning. But I did now. The battle did not have the same decisive effect as the Battle of the Trebia did. I mean, not just because Hannibal fought the Trebia and defeated the Romans, like like Suvorov did, but also because it just didn't help the process of the destructive battle of the Trebia River. Even so, the Austrians did have a weakened army, mainly because they overextended their lines. Also. This battle was probably propagandized by the French army to the French Republic and saying, hey, 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 we won the battle. Yeah, we defeated the Allies. But that's not, didn't, didn't really help anything. And again, it just didn't have any fruitful results for the continuing course of the war. And to be honest, it was pretty rare, a pretty surprising victory, which nobody, not even myself, could have ever expected. So let's get on to the next battle, which is actually a combat. And of course you can read the text on screen. It's called the, the Combat of Scan San Gregorio. And let's begin with the battle. The Combat of San Giorgio began on the 23rd. Actually no, on the 20th of June and then continued to the 23rd. Two sides engaged in skirmishes, and eventually it became a victory technically for the French because the French decided the French had a little more, little less casualties, and they soon withdrew. And then there would be another delaying action, not just this one. And so Savorov also decided to withdraw, but he would also keep pursuing. The casualties on both sides were very, very, very light, and this combat is not really important 
but it does serve a role in the war of the Italian campaign and basically in the war of the Second Coalition. MacDonald decided to keep withdrawing. However, there would be another combat in which uh, MacDonald's rear guard would fight the Allied vanguard. And the two sides would skirmish again after the disastrous battle of the Travia, in which the French lost half. And yes, I mean half when I say half. I mean half of their entire army. Let's move on to the next one. I was wrong. San Gregorio was on the 20th, while the combat of Salusa was on the 23rd. And the skirmish, or combat, quickly and very rapidly began. And the combat of Sassilua, Sassilua was another uh, Mac was another skirmish which MacDonald needed to save his army. And he quickly began trying and desperately trying to withdraw. This was after defeat on the Trebia. However, it soon turned in the French favor after a couple advances. And but the French decided to keep withdrawing to save his beleaguered army, and Tavorov called for withdrawal because this would be the last of the two combats after the Battle of the Trebia. But it would not be the last combat in the war of the Second Coalition and the Italian Campaign. The combat was not that deadly, as you might see, and both sides had very minor and relatively few and far between casualties. MacDonald had success successfully withdrawn and saved the remainder of his army, and soon he withdrew to Genoa, and then Moreau would fight at the Battle of Cassanio Groza. The next battle will be the Battle of Navi, and sadly, Alexander Tvorov will withdraw after this, and he will go all the way to Switzerland, in which Switzerland commemorates the great Russian general Alexander Vasilichevich Tvorov for his great, great deeds in pushing out the French. Second Mantua, or rather, the Second Siege of Mantua, began. It started in April and ended in July. And under Paul von Gray, well, the French quickly lost many men after several sally outs. And after the end of four months, the French agreed to surrender and withdrew. And the battle was. Well, the siege was bloody for the French, and after this, the famous Battle of Navi will occur, in which after that, sadly, and very oddly, the United States departs to Switzerland, which I'll also cover, but there was no casualties recorded for the Allies, and there was 3,100 casualties recorded for the French. 1,400 of these were wounded, and probably became prisoners, and the Allies had successfully, well basically the Austrians, had successfully besieged the fortress and had successfully gained the city of Mantua, and interesting, interestingly enough, when Napoleon succeeded a few years ago from 1996 to 17. 97, he besieged Mantua, and that was the first Mantua, but this time, Latte failed in his task to try and help the city. Well, that was not possible, as the French were already fighting the Allies in other areas. And this was a huge blow.
for the French. So far, the Italian campaign has gone mainly disastrous, has gone mainly in a very wayward manner, meaning it's disaster, a disaster for the French, because now they're losing most of the holdings, and this battle basically almost entirely pushed the French out of Italy, and that's how decisive the Battle of Navi truly was. If you're staying this long, I thank you for watching thus far. The Battle of Navi began on August 15th. Crazy Austrians came from the siege of Mantua, in which the French were surprised because they had 5,000 men less. The night before, Jabu had held a council of war, but Zavorov dismissed Jabut when he heard of him as a child, as a young man who comes to school. The French right was commanded by Saint Sire, the French center by Moreau, and the French left by Perigonon, consisted of Boucher and Lemion. Dombrowski was also commanding, was commanded by Balangardi, as well as Cranot, the center by General Der Felden, and contained Forster and Shikowalski, I uh, left under General Malas, and the general command under Alexander Suborov. A reserve of 10,000 men, 6,000 infantry, 4,000 cavalry, was posted on the Scrivia, and a little further to the north was General Rosenberg, with Ryan Brenner's division of 10,000 infantry, 2,000 Cossacks, and 1,000 cavalry from the Dragoons. This gave the Allies a total of 55,000 infantry and 15,000 cavalry. So, I was wrong. It was actually 70,000 against maybe 50,000, which is weird. The battle began at 5 in the morning while Cray hoped to capture Pastorana. And the French and the Allies quickly began forming up. However, unexpectedly and... Very surprisingly for Cray's Austrians, they faced fierce resistance from Perigonon's Frenchmen. Shibba died during this time, however, not during, not, um, oh, actually, he was hit by a musket ball and the wound was fatal. And both sides began clashing very fiercely, and initially the Allies soon got the better of it. And, and uh, as, however, the French began pushing, the Allies also began pushing on the opposite side, and the French withdrew. And after this, Alexander Svorf took some men with him to Switzerland, where he will campaign. And then Moreau also left, and he was dismissed. He was appointed to command the Army of the Rhine, placed by General Champagnot, and Melas replaced Svorf. And they decided to hold on at Genoa. The Battle of Navi, or Novi, because Novi in Russian means new, but that's a good joke, was fierce, very fierce for the French. And the French had a humongous, humongous loss during this battle. Well, I mean, in fact, Moreau was not effectively dismissed, but he was replaced by Chamonnot, who then became commander of the Rhine in Germania, because Germany wasn't a state yet, it was made of several, several German states, very small states, but it's basically a replacement, and Sivorov went away to the crisis in Switzerland, and I will cover those battles as well. The French had 1,500 dead, 5,000 wounded, and 3,000 to 4,600, I'll say 4,600 prisoners. For at least 10,600, I think. No, 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 wait. At the max, 11,100 Russo Austrians lost 8,200 men, 1,800 dead, 5,200 wounded, and 1,200 prisoners. And the battle was very deadly because the French could not afford their losses, unlike the Allies. Melas and Champagnot would fight. A few battles against each other. Again, you may read 
get the extras on the screen, but after this, we're going to go to several combats, and then we're going to go to a few more battles, and then we're going to wrap up the video. Battle of Navi was one of the most la was one of the last battles in the Italian campaign of 1799. Both sides fought fiercely against each other in the Battle of Navi. However, this is the first, but not the last, Battle of Navi. The combat of Pignaroli began on the 15th of September, a month after the Battle of Navi, and the two sides clashed. The Alps and Italian French armies needed to unite, so this combat was necessary. However, the French withdrew due to suffering. Godfrey's and the two armies had to withdraw from the battlefield. And Champagnot was frustrated. The Kajdis were light for both sides. And this combat didn't really achieve anything at all. Because both sides didn't really gain any decisive skirmish. The attempt to unite the weak French armies had failed, and Champagnet was really mad at this. His full name is General Jean Etienne Champagnet. The right hand French column had been defeated in this small combat, which again took a month after the combat, and then the Battle of Navi, which occurred. On August 15th, the next few combats will not be as decisive as the Battle of Navi, however, they will echo that. The combat of Rivoli began on the same day, and Redu Hamessi fought against Bellagardi. However, the French soon got the worst of the battle. Its reinforcements came, and the combat ended in another defeat. The combat of Rivoli had been somewhat of a disaster and the next two combats will be basically the same exact thing in this video you may see that I'm not trying to portray things in uh, an animated way but in a stop-motion way so make sure to read text on the screen I would really appreciate it if you like and subscribe to the channel let's keep going to the next combat in this video, again, the con you can keep reading text on the screen. Um, this video will be about the entire, yes, the entire 1799 Italian campaign. Probably very long, so thank you for staying with me thus far. On September 17th, 1799, two armies clashed. Champagnats and Melos at the combats of Fasano and Zavagliano. And it was the French loss so far. The two decided to clash again a second time. And again, it was a French loss. And nothing good came out of it. And Champagnats could not even ever think of uniting the army of the Alps and of Italy at this point. The casualties for both sides may have been light, but oh never mind. Um it wasn't it was well Melos was there, but he didn't really participate. So technically it was Bella Garde, so forgive me if I said um Forgive me if I said Melos. It was actually Bellagarde. And so far, the French have been losing, losing, and losing. And in any attempt to unite the Italian, the French Italian armies has so far ended in failure. However, the casualties of both sides are not so high as one may think. Because. It's just a combat, not an actual battle, and nothing really important truly happened 
to come out of these combats. On the 28th of September, 1799, French armies arrived at Mondovi, but the entire plan failed at the first hurdle because of a lack of food. The ar French army had to retreat, and Melas supported the Mondovian uh, garrison with men, and then decided to attack, and it basically ended in somewhat of some some the combat of Mondovi. Had been a French the defeat, suffered, and a little bit is pretty funny. And how the, combat the French had army, made. intending to siege Mondovi or at least attack it, had run out of supplies, so had to retreat. Then it was reinforced, and they, and then, and then it was taken. Well, in reality, no, 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 no. no. The French attacked three times, losing an entire battalion, and initially. The combat was pretty devastating for the French, and Jim Blanet would never forget this, I think. On the 13th of October, 1799, the combat of Bracco began, and the French charged into the Austrian line, and the Austrians lost. An entire division. And the combat had ended in an allied loss. Vatrin had failed and Chimboyanet had succeeded. However, this combat didn't really achieve much in the long run as we are going to eventually see. I mean, I guess you can say Chim Chimboyanet can take the credit for it, but it's actually Mel Weiss who did it and struck the very decisive blow to ultimately, only in the French eyes, was a decisive blow, and it achieved nothing at all. Let's move on. On the 14th of October, 1799, the combat of Beniente began. The French charged at Beniente and attacked repeatedly three times from different Directions. Why did they do this? Because they wanted to capture the city. And they did this at least one more time. Although they lost much men in the initial skirmish. And then they decided to attack again. But again, they failed. Beniente, or, well, I'm going to say this. I confused Wandovi with Beniente, and remember I said attack three times? They attacked three times. Yeah, I was actually referring to Beniente, and I'm sorry to have confused the two up, but it was an allied victory, and Mondovi was when the Austrians decided to attack from the rear uh, and, and will charge the French. And let's go on to the fact that I confused Beniente and Mondovi, and I'm very sorry to do this, but honestly, both of them are pretty funny on how they both entirely failed. On the, tw on the 24th of October, 1799, the Battle of Second Navi, or Bosco, began as the French charged the Allied position, and the Allies tried to hold out, but initially... It was deflated, and they lost the combat in great succession. The combat of Bosco, or the battle of Second Navi, depending on who you ask. No, I'm kidding, it's not depending on who you ask. Was a relatively, again, not decisive at all, victory. And the French couldn't really capitalize on this victory at all, because it didn't even do anything to help their army, but just took some men for some men. Very soon, we should go on to the Battle of Genoa, or the Battle of Second Bassano. And this is where Melos will truly prove his prowess, and where Champagnettes will prove his incapability to even try and thinking of Keeping an army in Italy, 
And you will see this in approximately a few seconds. On the 4th of the mem November, both sides clashed. Ott commanded the Austrian right, and therefore he clashed into, in, with Grenier. And then Grenier decided to withdraw. And effectively, Ott decided to chase after him with his men. And then Elnitz and Petrowski decided to attack the French. And effectively, the artillery helped push back the French. And effectively, the, ci the city soon surrendered, and the French had to withdraw from Genola. And soon, Ott chased after them, and effectively exterminated any resistance. And Melos and it was truly a great commander, and also Ott as well. But Melos retreated, and Melos went north to attack the French. The Battle of Genola was a very, very decisive victory. I want to point out that um, Mitrowski commanded the center, the Allied center. Um, uh, what was his name? Ilnitz commanded the Allied left, and Ott commanded the Allied right. Surprisingly, Champagnets made a mess of his army, and he said, Victor, Vinia, and do as me, you'll command three pots of my army, and we don't really... Know what to do with it, and honestly, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, I don't know. But after the battle, Champagnets split it into two parts, and you may argue that it's Ots and and all those other guys who are doing this work, and it might very well be so. But Melos was still a great commander, and he'll prove this in later battles in the Napoleonic Wars. If he even lives, that is. Uh -huh, that was a joke, because I don't know when he dies, but I hope he doesn't die soon. Um, so, effectively, Champagnet was basically weak, and he had to retreat to Saspulo. And it's not Saspulo, it's Sospel, and effectively, the Battle of Genola had pushed the border back to France, and Napoleon's so-called victories in Italy had all been decimated. And the six-year work from... 92 to 1798 had been utterly crushed by Melos and Alexander Suvorov, who had also helped to crush the French even more than Melos had. And he would do so in Switzerland, which will cover as well. Also, cover the Napoleonic like uh, campaigns in Italy before and after this campaign. And now let's move on to. Th the second Navi. It was actually third Navi and began on the 6th of November, 1799. Saint Cyr commanded the French and Cray commanded the Austrians, and the two sides clashed. However, Aust the Austrians were outnumbered 2 to 1 and lost a few men and had to retreat. This small scale to success did nothing because. Genola was too much and way too many casualties for the French and effectively this truly did nothing and in the last battle of 1799 we shall see the conclusion to the great 1799 Italian campaign and this is the siege of it began Bonio. on the 18th of November, 1799. General Joseph had 15,000 men and 500 workers, while General Clement on the French side had 3,000 men, or 2,000, 3,000 men and around 800 wounded. And it lasted around four months, and the siege was very deathly for the French, who did not even think of sallying out what would the artillery pieces and the like, and the workers were mainly used for zapping, zapping, which is basically blowing up the walls, and was kind of successful. However, the French soon surrendered, and they lost a lot of men, and the last battle of the Italian campaign of the Napoleonic Wars 
1799 of the French Revolutionary Wars had just ended. And it was an allied success. The siege of Cunio had crushed any French resistance in the Italian peninsula. And you want to know why I'm talking so exaggerated? Because it's the last battle. I have to, I have to act with respect to the last battle of the Italian campaign of 1799. And no, I'm not going to continue with the Napoleon and Gore's French Revolution Wars, all that stuff. But the siege of Cunio was certainly a most decisive en engagement and all the other combats which had French success can be dastardly overshadowed by the several amazing victories of the Russo-Austrians over the French. The Allies are always the Russo-Austrians, even though the British was also at war with them, and I think the Austrians as well. Um, but we say Russian-Austrians because that was the Allied. Why? Because they were originally Allies. Then World War One happened. Then they weren't Allies anymore. And that was a bad joke, but it actually happened. But let us go to the initial wrap-up, which we will do in a few seconds. And I just want to say thank you for watching so far this very long video, which we will conclude. And initially, the campaign of 1799 was an allied success. The Battle of Verona was an indecisive battle. Magnano, allied victory. Cassano, allied victory. Vasignana, French victory. First Marengo, allied victory. Modena, French victory. Trebia, allied victory. Second Marengo, French victory. San Giorgio. Somewhat indecisive, Sal Lucio, somewhat indecisive. Second Mantua, Austrian victory, or rather allied victory. First Navi, allied victory. Pignarolo, indecisive. Rivoli, indecisive. First Fasano, indecisive. Mondovi, allied victory. Bracco, French victory. Valiente, allied victory. Second Navi, French victory. Genola, or second Fasano, allied victory. Third Navi, French victory, and finally, the Siege of Cuneo, Allied victory. What I have to prove? I, I'm, I'm proving that the Allies won the Italian campaign of 1799 and dashed all of Napoleon's work to pieces. However, I don't think Napoleon even heard about this. If he did, he probably was enraged. But he decided to come back, and we will see what happens after... What will happen? Many things. More importantly, the battle, the fourth battle of Marengo. And no, it wasn't the first battle. It was the fourth battle of Marengo. And so far, we've covered the great 1799 Italian campaign. Thank you for watching. It's extremely long and really hard to make video. And please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video because I will be making more Forgotten Wars. See you on the next one. The next one I'll cover is either the British invasion of Holland or Napoleon's invasion of Egypt or the Switzerland campaign. Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you subscribed, shared this video with your friends, and liked and pressed the bell button for future videos. Goodbye and actually see you in the next amazing historical video.